No, no, I don't think college athletes are given enough time to really take advantage of, of the free education that they're given. You wake up in the morning, you have weights at this time. Then after weights, you go to class. And after class, you go, you go maybe try to grab you a quick bite to eat. And then after you get your quick bite to eat, you go straight to meetings. And after meetings, you got practice. And after practice, you got to try to get all the work done you, you had throughout the day. You know, as a former college athlete, that's exciting. You spent so much time in college broke with no money, and yet everybody else was living very well. Um, the university's making a ton of money off your likeness. It doesn't, it, it does not make any sense. I can make all the money off your likeness, and the moment you decide to make some money off your likeness, you can't play here anymore. Our next guest was a kicker on the University of Central Florida football team. He has a profitable YouTube page. The university did not like that. The, NCAA, the NCAA didn't like it either, so they kicked him off the team. I have a paper, the waiver that they offered me to sign, and it says I can't even, unmonet I can't even post unmonetized footage of me playing football. I can't be at the beach tossing up footballs with my friends. I can't even mention quarterbacks, nothing like that. NCAA President Mark Emmert declined an interview, but we caught up with him at a press conference. Why not pay college athletes? Because they're students and they're, they're not employees uh, at, the, at the end of the day. You know, young men and women come to college because they want to get an education, because they want to participate in, in their sport as part of that educational experience. Can you truly believe the NCAA? This system has programs making billions of dollars and they don't allow their players to generate revenue from their own clout. Like, really think about that. The college doesn't even pay you for what you bring into the university, but you can't brand yourself and find somewhere else to make money setting yourself up for the future. It doesn't really make that much sense. Literally, if you're a star at a university and you want to promote yourself maybe financially with the resume that you earned yourself, you can't. You will get kicked out of the program and probably lose your scholarship. I mean, it's already enough that the athletes have to slave their bodies on the education side and the athletic side for free, but if they find a legal side hustle that can help them stop eating noodles and Gatorade all day, they'll get kicked out. That's, that's not fair. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different. I'll try not to talk too much. One, because I've never been a college athlete. I never have been, never will be. I played all throughout high school, but I will never understand that Division I, Division II grind. But with that being said, my blood brother played Division I sports, and I have a lot of friends around Division I sports that actually play. So I have a pretty good understanding of the system and how corrupt it is. As you've probably heard if you don't live under a rock, LeBron James helped pass a new act in California called the Fair Pay to Play Act. Basically, this new rule allows players to actually monetize and get financial gain off of their individual likeness, finally. So things like signing autographs, selling merchandise, things like that will finally be allowed in California starting in 2023. Now, with all that great stuff being said, I feel like these rules are way overdue. Think about it like this. There's about 4,500 D1 college basketball athletes every year and less than 2% go pro. Think about that. Even when they go pro, it's not that many of them that last. Think about how many people actually get drafted and think about how many people actually pop. The NBA's average career span is about less than five years, so for the players that really didn't pop and excel in the NBA, their peak may have been in college where they possibly could have set themselves up to make more money in the future. And it may not just be in basketball, it may be in business where they can use their big college name around campus and maybe start a profitable business. It may be a YouTube channel like Destroying. It's multiple ways they can brand themselves with their college name and you can't just slap them an uncertain degree that they probably don't even know much about because they were so busy making you money with that sport. You can't just do that, that's not really fair. Jimmer for debt was the undoubted man at BYU averaging 29 points in his senior year. This was the absolute peak of this man's basketball career. You don't think he could have benefited off his likeness with autographs, jersey sales, things like that? I mean, he was the biggest thing around campus for a few years, and yeah, he went pro, but you don't think he could have earned a few extra thousand dollars with all the jersey sales he's brought to this day for that school? Like, it may not be a lot, but he earned it, so why not give it to him? 
Think about how many asses he put in those seats. Think about how many eyes he had glued to the television watching a BYU basketball game. Do you think all those fans and all those people were coming out to see Dave Rose, who's pocketing millions off of being a coach? Hell nah, man. Think about LeBron James. He pretty much just publicly shit on the NCAA, saying that if he went to college, it would have done nothing for him. And he said it right, his jerseys would have sold crazy, NCAA numbers would have went insane, and he would have pocketed absolutely nothing from it. And imagine if he would have gotten hurt and never made it to the NBA. Then he just turns into a big ass what if and he never gets the revenue that he generated for the program and that's completely twisted. The moment the quote unquote student athletes begin to generate billions of dollars for the program, they're no longer just students, they're employees, say what you want, and they obviously should get compensated for their appeal. If it's all about the program and all about the school pride and not about the athletes and all about the coaches, how about you have Coach K coach 10 Duke Blue Devil mascots and see how much money that generates. Last year coming out of high school, Zion Williamson, RJ Barrett, and Cam Reddish were the number one, number two, and number three recruits coming out of high school in 2018, and they all committed to Duke. Think about how much money that trio alone made for Duke last year. The school is worth damn near $8 billion already, and last year off the basketball program alone, they made close to $30 million. $30 million for the basketball program alone, and the players like Zion, whose jerseys was selling everywhere and being worn everywhere, profited nothing. Meanwhile, Coach K, and no disrespect to him, he brought in nearly $9 million, and he doesn't play one dribble. And what you talking about? Medical Center is one of the best in the country. <laughs> Come on, Che. You and I both know I ain't getting no burn here. Figure out. Get my knee right, maybe I could transfer down the level. So transfer? Porter, man, what's going on? This school's your life. Look, Che, I... Coach took my scholarship, man. They've been robbing the kids, they've been cheating them, they've been selling their jerseys, they've been stealing their likeness and feeding them muscle milk and peanut butter sandwiches. I would try to give them money to get food. Nah, coach, you can't. I don't want to be in violation. I try to get them clothes and shit. Nah, coach, you can't because I'm being in violation. I never understood why I couldn't do anything to help the kids out and they mama sitting at home struggling in a one bedroom apartment, can't come to the games, can't barely see the games, can't even eat. His scholarship didn't cover the cost of living, so he started a business in college. But when he began using his name and image to promote it, the school shut it down. You know, there's so many rules that are saying what we can't do, you know, and in my mind, I had the mindset, like, what can we do? You know, like, everything in the rule about student athlete cannot do this, cannot do that, cannot do this, cannot do that. What about what a student athlete can do? NCAA rules prevent current athletes from making money off of their fame. Create the opportunities, take advantage of the platform and the brand and the marketing that you have available to you. But as far as paying players, professionalizing college athletics, that's where you lose me. Uh, I'll go do something else because, uh, you know, there's enough entitlement in this world as it is. For sure, I would have been one of those kids if I would have went off to Ohio State or if I would have went off to any one of these, uh, you know, big-time colleges where uh, pretty much that 23 jersey would have got sold all over the place without my name on the back, but everybody would have known the likeness. Um, uh, my body would have been on the NCAA basketball game 2004, and um, the Sean Steen Center uh, would have been sold out every single night if I was there. Um, so, and, uh, you know, coming from the just – you know, for me and my mom, we didn't have anything. We wouldn't have been able to benefit at all from it. Um, and the university would have been able to capitalize on everything, um, you know, that I would have been there for that year or two or whatever, so. And I've always, like, heard the narrative, like, they get a free education. Uh, but you guys are not bringing me on campus to get an education. You guys are bringing me on it to help me get to a Final Four or to a national championship. NCAA is, is, is I mean, it's, it's cool. We know that. I'm sorry. It's going to make headlines, but... In conclusion, it does seem like college sports is moving their system in the right direction, but I'll still like to see some tweaks and some fixes. I feel like all college athletes that play D1 and all this stuff, 
they should have health insurance. Like, I don't care if it's the 15th man. If he gets hurt, I don't like the fact that you just strip their scholarship and just take them away. Like, that doesn't even feel right. I understand it's a business, but when you have all these coaches in the hood visiting all these recruits and you got Nick Saban dancing at somebody's house and playing around, they're treating you like, you know, you're golden and they're selling their program to you, but they don't mention the business side of it. And it's just not right. Also, I feel like if somebody gets hurt, why take away their scholarship and make them pay out of pocket or pay student loans? Like, that's not right either. If, they're, if they get hurt trying to make you guys more money because that's what it is, it's a business, at least let them get their education. Obviously, these are just my raw emotions about it. Um, it was a big topic all week with this new act with California, appreciating LeBron James for making it happen. So I'm just giving you guys my take on it and letting you guys see other people's perspective about it as well. If you guys like the video, make sure you guys like the video. If I have any college athletes or former college athletes that have stories, drop it in the comment section because I will be reading all of the comments in this video. Um, if you guys like the video, like the video, like, comment, subscribe, do all the great stuff. And until next time, as always, stay tuned.